Hi, everybody. Welcome. Hope you're having a good Friday. Uh, if you can hear me, or if you cannot hear me, please let us know in the chat box if you can, um, and we'll do something about it. Otherwise, welcome. This is um, a webinar, and I want to thank you for attending. I want to thank Five Element TCM Supply for hosting, and it is titled Using Herbal Medicine to Promote Your Private Practice. So, my name is Mitchell Harris, um, and I am an acupuncturist and herbalist in Chicago. I've been in practice for 15 years, and I'm a adjunct professor and supervisor at Pacific College, which now is called Pacific College of Health and Science in Chicago. And I'm the chair of Department of Clinical Procedure. And uh, an important note is I'm also the practice management professor for the past nine years and have a lot of insight into the challenges of trying to grow your private practice. So I'll just check a moment to see if everybody's okay with what they can hear. Doesn't look like anybody's having any problems. Again, just uh, ask your questions in chat or question mode and we'll save some time at the end to answer those questions. So there I am. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, I got my MSTOM from Pacific College in San Diego and I earned my Diplomate of OM and I went to China also to study and I saw how they practice Chinese medicine there and the different systems they have compared to the systems we have. Um, I've been in private practice as I mentioned since 2004 and I've been in practice in Indiana in Illinois. Um, I was the president emeritus, I am the president emeritus of the Indian Acupuncture Association uh, and been a member of the Illinois Association. I've also helped publish some articles for Meridian's Journal, which has now changed its name. Um, and so I'm, I'm deeply interested in trying to get the general public to become more educated in what we do so that we have more opportunities to heal them and be successful on our own. Uh, I am an educator. Uh, I mentioned that already. And uh, one thing that's worth noting is when I moved to Chicago, I had no uh, clientele at all. And um, that was a little concerning, but a friend of mine who I met through the state associations said, you know, you seem like you, you like to speak, you're comfortable in front of people, you should join, uh, you know, a, a, a sort of networking group that meets every week. You pay a fee and then you can become, you know, the acupuncturist for the group. And uh, he said, just make sure it's a good fit. So I did that. And um, it was a lunchtime group, which is a, uh, I think a better time to chat. It's a, in the Chinese medical cycle, right? It's heart, small intestine is a more relaxed, friendly time in the morning. It's large intestine, stomach. So, you know, you're actually supposed to be either going to the bathroom or eating food, not so much networking time. So the afternoon really appealed to me. There was some um, vegans and vegetarians and health conscious people. And, um, and I gave it a go. I'm still in that group nine years later and I've used almost everyone professionally um, in ways that I, I didn't really think I would. And, in that group, I've really honed my skills for seeing what makes people uh, click with what I'm saying, what I'm offering. These are professionals who have nothing to do with Chinese medicine. And it took me six months before anyone even tried my services. But through that group, I've developed uh, especially um, a reputation with herbal medicine that I didn't anticipate. And that's what spawned some of my interest here to help out um, you and also to let you know about some products that I have created that, that were born out of this networking ability. Um, to advertise my practice through herbs. I also come from a background of the arts. I'm very interested in narrative and storytelling. I think that dovetails nicely into promoting your practice. Um, storytelling in song, storytelling in uh, film, storytelling as a means to communicate your story and connect to people. I think it's one of the, outside of music and touch, it's, it's one of the original art forms and obviously in uh, medical history. So a little bit about that. So, you know, questions, now we're just going to shift into practice management mode here. You know, how are you marketing your practice? This is about marketing your practice using herbal medicine. So let's stop and think, how do we currently market our practices? And, and maybe there's some things that I haven't thought of here. You're welcome to chat uh, me up and tell me something maybe I forgot. But I think the main avenues are networking uh, as a small business and to small businesses and to the public, right? You go to a networking event. I put the picture of some people down there, whether it's Chamber of Commerce, maybe it's a one-time thing, maybe it's a weekly event, but some kind of small business and public interaction 
so that people find out about your business. And then you have word of mouth from your clients, which we do very well in our medicine because people are so fascinated by it and they're so delighted by it that they tend to do very well uh, speaking about our medicine for us. Uh, there's meetings and networks, uh, networking with medical professionals, which might mean sort of calling up and scheduling with a medical doctor, whether it's a DO or an MD, or maybe there's a PT or a fitness trainer or a massage therapist. There's so many people who, who don't do what we do, who see a lot of patients. And herbal medicine in particular expands our scope into territory they may not realize we can help, that I feel fairly confident we do uh, better than almost any other medical professional. Then there's online platforms, Google Ads, Facebook, Instagram. Um, I am learning more about that, um, and it is an important area to look into. It is uh, uh, obviously a sign of the times that Facebook has such a big reach. Um, so that is another area that we can check. But when we network, uh, let's think about this. What are our most powerful tools? I think a lot of times when I see people in networking groups, um, I don't know if they've thought ahead about what their goal is, but what they're trying to achieve. Often we might show up and just sort of say, well, this is where I graduated from. You know, I study this medicine and it's really great. And um, yeah, that's who I am, right? And if we craft a story, if we think about what we're trying to accomplish, we might have better success in networking and in marketing our practice. So in my mind, these are three important aspects and powerful tools we have in networking. We have the communication of how we solve problems, right? How we solve problems. So just saying you're an acupuncturist is interesting to some people. It's actually scary to other people. They think about needles, at least in the Midwest, there's still a lot of fear. So communicating how we solve problems non-pharmacologically uh, without interventions like surgeries, that sounds more appealing. So our language and our ability to speak effectively is, I think, critical. Then there's the evidence of how we solve these problems. You know, anybody can say they solve it, but how do we prove that? Okay, so we have narratives of how we come to these solutions. There's, for example, success, success stories. Um, hey, I just treated someone in the clinic the other day for this, and this was the outcome, right? People tend to get riveted by those kind of stories, again, because storytelling is an important connection between people that we all share. And then, of course, something like a testimonial. Um, I spelled that wrong. Testimonial. That's a, a new form of a testimonial. Uh, but testimonials, um, similar idea, right? They're supposed to be a story that's conveying an idea. Now, are they true or not? I think people assume they are. We're in an age where people are maybe perhaps not telling truth as much. But let's, um, I think, assume that when something's real, it comes out. It comes out in your shen and your spirit. Um, and obviously, you don't want to be promoting something that's not possible. So if you're new and you haven't, you're thinking, well, what testimonials do I have? You know, really look at your clinic experience. You, I guarantee there's been successes. Whenever I have students say, uh, you know, please gather some testimonials from the, the patients you're seeing in the school clinic, they're often blown over by how influenced these, these patients are by what they've done, and, and they don't realize how much they've helped them. So always important to grab some testimonials to realize the success stories you have. But after that, I think the evidence is also in the products that we offer, um, so products that offer solutions to problems. So it's looping that back in to the communication. Hey, I solve problems. Here's some evidence of it. In fact, here's a product I have that can solve this problem right now for you. Americans are famously not patient people. Um, and people in small business in American culture today are incredibly busy. So we'll talk more about this, but I think it's important to have products that you feel confident can offer some solutions. Are they absolutely perfect by some kind of Zongfu standard? Maybe or maybe not, but can they offer a solution that you're happy with? And I think herbal medicine is, is really one of our best tools. I think patients learn firsthand how effective this medicine can be, and it turns them on to your capacity to solve health problems, period, and how to be effective. And then they might think, well, what else can you do for me? What is this acupuncture stuff? What, what, what else are you talking about? Why do you talk about food this way? Why do you talk about yin and yang? What, what are these ideas? I didn't realize you had solutions. Again, if there's ever any question or you want me to slow down or there's any, any audio issue, please just uh, let us know in chat. Doesn't look like anybody has any issues going forward. 
just let me know. Uh, what problems can we solve with herbal medicine quickly and with some very high degree of success? Okay, so this was my list. Feel free to add in the chat anything uh, that I'm missing. But in my estimation, again, this is I'm a general practitioner. I'm like family practice. I see a lot of pain. I see a lot of digestive disorders, sleep disorders, anxiety, colds, and upper respiratory conditions. So I'm very comfortable treating these things. I also know that there are herbal medicines that can do these things quite successfully where Western medicine struggles pretty mightily with these issues. Um, but two of these in particular, and one I'm going to hone in on as I think what can be very successful for us. So to be continued, a little cliffhanger there. But we have an issue here, and the issue I find um, Chinese medical students and graduates have is this sort of concern with the issue of lineage or pattern-based diagnostic adherence. <clears throat> How can I prepare and have something ready to go if I don't have a one-hour interview with this patient and spend 30 minutes with them and 60 minutes with them um, and you know figure out the exact zong food diagnostic? Uh, I think we think we cannot offer treatment without a complete workup. And then often asking them for payment first for the privilege of them being evaluated and then pay them for herbal formula that they don't even know works yet. So from a standpoint of the patient, standpoint of a skeptical, let's say, American Midwesterner, it's, it's a couple of barriers come up there, right? Oh, you do something, you help people. Can you help me uh, right now? Um, I have a problem. Well, you know, first, you don't know me, you don't trust me, but can you come and pay me for an hour visit? Uh, can I do some things that are a little bit unusual? Then I'll give you an herbal formula and then you'll come back in a week and let's find out how you do. And you'll pay me for the herbs on top of that. How's that sound? Do you see where there's, it's a, more barriers to jump through. The idea of obstacles between your trust and your success of the patient, it, it, it gets pretty high. I mean, I'm someone who doesn't really even like to charge that much more for my first treatment because I want those obstacles to be low because I know if they find value, they're going to come back in at least one more time than if they never came back in in the first place, never came in in the first place. So I think that's my personal philosophy on that. So let's look at this. I've kind of tried to create some language around this. And my feeling is, are you adherent to an orthodoxy only or are you willing to explore assimilation? Um, so these ideas are the idea that being orthodox means you're conforming to established doctrine. And I have some, some orthodox folks there. Um, now we have our own form of orthodoxy in Chinese medicine. And I think it's great. I think we do want people who are orthodox, meaning really conform to established doctrine, very tried and true, very traditional, um, and don't want to conform in any way. I don't know personally if that is the way to think in a society and culture that does not understand our philosophy and our medicine. If that happens uh, and you want to ingrain that idea into the new society, it's called assimilation. And that's the process of receiving new facts or of responding to new situations in conformity with what is already available to consciousness. These people's consciousness is such that they are not aware of the idea of paying someone for an herbal consult to then figure out if herbs work. They're used to trying something right away. Now that doesn't mean it's always correct. There are certain cases that are complicated, obviously, where you say, hang on, I really need to see in my office. This is not just a, a simple problem. This is a very complex problem and we need to talk. So absolutely, you need to respect your boundaries as a practitioner and protect those boundaries, protect your, your process. But a majority of people have pretty similar aches and pains. They have pretty similar cold and flu. I think it's losing the forest for the trees to say, never will I ever see you unless I get the exact diagnostic. Um, I think there's an element marketing wise that's problematic, at least for myself. So I'm more of an assimilation person. And so the question is then, what is close enough in diagnostic orthodoxy to prove our point? that we can heal others with a power of herbal medicine. Meaning, I think a lot of folks, when they graduate, they think, well, I have to get this diagnostic 100% right. You know, if there's 20 formulas for cold and flu, which one am I gonna choose? I think that's splitting hairs if you're trying to grow your practice. I think most people have supplements that barely do anything at all. Chinese medicine is the most advanced herbal medicine that I've ever experienced, and I think the world has ever experienced. And I can communicate that, and I can prove it. 
if I get you on this map, if I get you even on the board where you realize, wow, these herbs actually do something. Now we have trust. Now I have a potential client. Now I can target even more specifically the herbs for you. And now you can know that I'm a problem solver. So I think the idea of having to hit a bullseye right out of the, the gate is a little bit of a marketing problem. I think you want to get on the board with as many people as possible. I think that's why I've been able to grow my practice um, in a lot of networking situations is I'm not splitting hairs and becoming overly academic as opposed to saying, let me try to help you. And of course, if this doesn't help you, you're going to let me know. You might need a customized formula and we'll talk about that. And I'd, I'd make it work for them. So what's the point, I would ask you, of requiring a diagnostic bullseye if the patient's not willing to take the extra steps to book an herbal consult with you before they understand the power of Chinese herbs? There's a RIP Grumpy Cat. I think Grumpy Cat did pass away. Little meme there dashing through the no. Little holiday tip of the hat. You know, a lot of people just say, oh, but yeah, okay, maybe one day. You know, you're competing with over-the-counter medicines and in a huge uh, supplement industry that has aches and pain solutions, apparently, and cold and flu solutions. I don't think any of them are as powerful as Chinese medicine, but they can just go walk up to the store and buy them. And so how do I begin to let these people know that this, this is useful? Okay, so I think we have some um, issues here, and I'm going to break down a little bit what maybe the orthodox explanation would be and how I would shift that into more of a marketing assimilated explanation. So how are we, going back to that first, that slide early on, how are we communicating problems uh, in networking events? Now, this would be an orthodox explanation, and I can get into this mode if I'm not careful. I, I, I am in academics. I am a, a bit nerdy with this stuff. You know, we can talk about the divine farmer. I'm not going to read all this, but how he compiled a certain amount of herbs in 206 BCE, the late 16th century man. Um, added and created this material medica and was it a real person or was it a compendium of people and how many herbs thousands of herbs they created and 10,000 formulas and millennia then to discover all these theories and classifications okay all of this is is true and it's potentially powerful stuff but it's pretty academic i would say an assimilated explanation is meaning meeting the consciousness of the people who you're speaking with who know zero about chinese medicine well Here's the fact. Chinese medicine is the longest running herbal medicine on the planet. The culture that started in the, it's a culture that started in the often frigid northern regions where they had to contend with very cold climate, bringing body tension and weather related issues. Thus, they treat pain, colds and flus very successfully. Does that make sense? So I'm really making this simple and pointing out key uh, health concerns that I can help them with. Today, I'm gonna talk more about cold and flu. And that's what I've decided to focus on. And that I think is one of our secret weapons. I do think we also have uh, you know, tremendous options for all the things I mentioned before, digestion, anxiety, uh, you know, fertility, women's health. But I'm focusing on pain, cold and flu because of the narrative I'm setting up, right? So every time you speak to a marketing, a networking group, you would set up your narrative, not do all of them at once, focus in on some and then keep focusing in on those. Um, since I treat general practice, family practice, you know, pain, cold, and flu is something most people deal with, and I'm in the Midwest, and so they deal with it for a long time. I also want to point out that, you know, when people say, oh, oh okay, that's a lineage. Hey, by the way, Chinese medicine, is that homeopathy too? I mean, they really don't understand the differences between, you know, long standing, you know, different cultural medicines. Uh, the essential oils, is, is that part of it? You know, the questions that very smart people ask me, just let me know, you know, they, they're really on step, you know, 1A of understanding Chinese medicine and herbal medicine in general. So I really want to make this easy for them and make it simple and point out big picture items. So then moving on, the evidence of how we solve problems. Um, Here's an orthodox explanation of Chinese herbal medicine evidence. The effectiveness is in the long-standing traditions that have proven effective for thousands of years. We, we can often end up saying that we don't know what will be the most effective uh, herbal medicine for you until we take your pulse, look at your tongue, and figure out just which one of the multitude forms works for you. There's some attraction to that because it says, well, I'm letting them know it's been around for a long time and that you know it's really crafted for you. And I think if you can say it that simply, it could be powerful. But there's a hint that I can't help you. 
And there's a hint that you should just trust me because like we're the ones who've been around the longest. But often people at networking events don't know who you're talking about has been around the longest. They're confused what, what herbs are from whom. And there's a certain concept here then that I can't help you right now. You know, you have to come in later. There's nothing even remotely helpful that I can do for you. And I think that's where you want to separate those two ideas. I can be most effective if you come in and see me, but I can help you now and you can try these things out right away. I want to be helpful. I think the key idea in a way is how can I be helpful as quickly as possible with the tremendous power Chinese herbal medicine has? Again, if you have any comments or questions, um, I'm checking on chat and, and uh, in the questions area if you have anything to say. So then moving on, evidence of how we solve problems. An assimilated explanation, meaning simplified, is Chinese herbal medicine is powerful and offers immediate benefits if taken as directed and for the right symptoms. And then a product. Here's a product that meets most of my clients' needs. Could be for pain, could be for colds. I'm going to go deeper into the cold route because that's where I crafted an herbal line specifically to help network and help as many people as possible. But then I would say, if this is not as effective as I think it will be, don't worry, I'll work with you to find another formula that it does. I'll check in with you in two or three days, see how you're doing. So if they purchase this product, now I also have an agreement with them that I can check in with them. I can build a relationship with them, right? So if anything is not perfect, no problem. I have enough trust to, to remedy that. But I'll be honest, uh, at least in terms of cold and flu, I I'm finding 75, 80% success rate. Could it be improved upon? in terms of speed or exact efficacy? I think so, but the patients are telling me this, wow, that stuff really works because so many things don't. And Chinese medical doctors figured this out a long time ago. Um, so for pain and cold, since I'm not gonna, I'm sorry, for pain, since I'm not gonna go further into that, I just wanted to tip the hat a little bit to some things that I use. Um, you can look up studies on what's the most utilized, you know, Chinese herbal formulas for let's say arthritis, and that is also a formula that's called Mobility 2 by Health Concerns. And they might customize that a little bit, but that's the same formula. It's for joint pain. They have one called Mobility 3 that is for more wind, damp, cold scenarios, which would be slightly different full body pain. And they have one called Channel Flow that Misha Cohen developed, um, uh, I believe, along with Andrew Gator. That is for, um, it's almost like I tell people, it's like an herbal NSAID, right? Um, it's going to be for, for fibromyalgia and full body pain, a little more internal pain. But I have a friend who played rugby and he still does kind of good old boy rugby days uh, where they bang each other up. And he took it. He said, yeah, he's the one who gave me the idea. He said, this is like herbal, an herbal aspirin. Um, that's the kind of level that people are thinking. You know, they need something very simple. Can I really get detailed in what kind of, uh, you know, pain form I'm giving you? Of course, this is Chinese medicine. I can get as artistic as I want. But can I help you as soon as possible and have people stand up and say, hey, if you don't want to take, you know, uh, ibuprofen because it might create an ulcer and you're taking it all the time, you know, turns out that Mitch has an answer. People do not understand the side effects of, of medications. That's also a big strategy of mine is just be a friendly neighborhood doctor. Hey, you know, if you're just taking ibuprofen every now and then, not a big deal, but if you're taking it a lot, here's something you should know. Here's what a prostaglandin is. Here's how it helps stop pain. And here's how it also blocks your stomach lining from being formed. Um, you know, a little bit of fear goes a long way because these are real things that we want to be aware of. So you need to be an educator. Uh, I'm going to go further into the cold and flu um, concepts now and how I would advertise this to help boost my practice. And what I judge this by is by the light and the shin in my uh, networking group's eyes. I can tell when I quote unquote have them, right? You've heard that. I can tell when I have the audience. They're engaged, their eyes are locked on you, their spirit is sort of bubbling a little bit. They're sort of, uh, they're, they're tantalized and they're curious. And um, you can do that several ways. Um, but I really wanna get the message across. I think we need to stop, stop nerding out. Um, Chinese medicine is you know, ultimately pretty academic, artistic and nerdy. And we, if we are practicing it, we love it. The problem is that's not who you're, who you're selling your practice and products to. You're, you're, you want to start selling products that immediately prove you're effective. You're selling a solution to a problem that someone has. And they don't really care most of the time about the nuances of these things. They just want to see that you have solutions so that they can start to trust you. 
So the faster people try your products that you know work for a wide majority of clients, I think the sooner they realize you're a problem solver. So that's that difference between being orthodox and, and saying, no, 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 it has to be specific to saying, you know what, I'm here to help people and assimilating my ideas to what they understand to get them in my fold. And then slowly I can teach them more about my, my system of thought. The sooner they'll perform uh, a testimonial for you at a networking event or in writing when they try your product and know it helps, they'll stand up and literally you have to do nothing at these networking events. Once people try products at work that you gave them, they'll stand up and tell the world, you got to go see Jennifer. You got to go see, you know, Alex. They have the solution to the common cold. You know, they'll, they'll, they'll take big swings. They'll say, wait, I don't know if I said that. But they'll advertise for you in a way that immediately then gives the trust of the group because it's no longer coming from you. And that happens by people trying things. Um, and so also, of course, the sooner they start word of mouth, they start telling friends who suffer from the same issues. So your practice starts to grow. And we are about halfway through, and I'm going to leave uh, uh, to aim to leave 10 minutes or so, 15 for um, questions at the end, if you have any. Um, so these are now some ideas of how uh, I try to advertise the herbal products that I like to sell. These are products now that I've created based on what I used to sell, and I decided just to make some of my own to make this easier. And that's one reason I'm doing this seminar is I want to spread the word that I've helped grow my practice, and I'm known more for solving cold and flu situations than maybe even for pain in my networking events now. Um, and that happened very organically. And um, I think we could all benefit from this. So these are some of the tactics I use to uh, attract attention. Now, this is just general information. This is more of the orthodox side of, you know, there's a lot of facts here. All I need to go is look at uh, concerns for cold and flu, center disease control, and there's a major concern for antibiotic overuse. General public forgets about this. There's a lot of facts. I just pulled this straight from the website. Um, it's an urgent threat to public health care. Um, sensitive bacteria can be killed in your gut. Um, there can be overgrowth then of resistant um, ones that are resistant. Um, you can create drug resistance. It can be dangerous to children and uh, the elderly. So they're very susceptible. Um, you know, people with common infections. You know, it goes on, attitudes, behaviors, trends. This is, gets a little bit alarming. Now, I'm going to distill this down for them, right? This is a little bit too much information, but this is what I'm looking at to decide what I'm going to say, what my narrative is going to be um, as I'm setting up the idea that I have a solution for, for a lot of cold and flu situations. At least 30% of antibiotic courses prescribed in the outpatient setting are unnecessary, meaning no antibiotic was needed at all. The general public forgets a very simple fact that colds are viruses majority of the time. And there's a reason that pharmaceutical companies haven't been able to create that um, product. Um, so as we go on, we see that it's one out of five emergency department visits are for adverse drug events. Um, antibiotics being one of the most, 10.7 billion is spent on antibiotics. That's 2009, including 6.5 billion among patients who visit physicians' offices and 3.5 billion among hospitalized patients. I mean, it's staggering. We're so inundated with this problem, we don't even see it anymore. So without being too, you know, doomsday, I do want to let people know, you know there's a problem here. So just to summarize some of the stats, 2 million people are affected by antibiotic resistance and a, a fair amount do die. 23,000 do die. Um, the amount of prescriptions given is 805 per 1,000 people. That's 47 million unnecessary antibiotic prescriptions written in America alone. Just let that number sink in. I uh, guarantee you these are people in the audience who've had their children on antibiotics at some point and themselves on antibiotics at some point. And it just hasn't sunk in because I am competing with a very competitive market. So I want to let people know there's a reason you want to try these herbs. The reason is the method we're using <clears throat> is considered dangerous by the Center of Disease Control, not me. I do consider it dangerous, but it's because I'm reading this data because I'm your friendly healthcare provider. That's up to one third and one half of antibiotic use in humans is unnecessary or inappropriate. I mean, that is scary. So basically, if you do the math, that means 15 to 24 million improper prescriptions or unnecessary antibiotic prescriptions per year in the US. Um, if that means that one third were unnecessary, that, that 
number up top 47 million unnecessary i'll have to double check which one's the correct but i think um the 24 million is correct i might have typed that wrong that there's 47 million prescribed so what would i distill from that okay for patients hey a viruses are the main source of cold and flu prescribing antibiotics is often is often for secondary bacterial infections when the virus is left untreated so the idea of waiting to get sicker and sicker and sicker until you might need antibiotics, which would then damage your gut flora, which as we know, might set you up for more uh, immune problems. It is a bit crazy. Plants have a natural antiviral antibiotic property which protect themselves against predators, and that's gonna be a bitter flavor. In fact, that's the idea of the bitter pill, right? The bitter, the better. So I'm setting themselves up to realize, hey, if you taste something funky in these herbs, that means it's working. I want them to get excited and know that that means that this is potent good stuff the ideas we reviewed you can pull any one of the facts out of that those facts we looked at antibiotic overuse is dangerous for many 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 reasons uh, but this is something that you want your family to be aware of you do not want to be the person with antibiotic resistance when you get a uti or when you get have a respiratory infection it goes from standard practice to critical incredibly quickly and as a culture, if we lose the use and ability to use antibiotics, it, it's going to be a devastating blow. Um, scary, actually. That's probably why people don't want to talk about it that much. These herbs are from uh, a culture with thousands of years of experience. So again, Chinese medicine, what is it? It's the culture with the longest written history of herbs in the world. They had to deal with cold and flu. If they got sick, they could die from it. And they recognized that danger and they crafted herbal formulas that work to this day. Some of them are 1,800 years old. Some of them are 700 years old. You know, the baby ones are, are all older than Western medicine combined. So how do you figure out what to choose? Well, that's where I come in. I study Chinese medicine in depth and I've made it very easy for you to try something right away that generally works on most people's cold and flu. Again, if you have something specific, or highly complicated, I can help you also, but I have something you can try. Or if you know somebody who's sick, this is something you can, you can give them. It could even be a stocking stuffer. Cold and flu is happening right now in Chicago. I was just in a clinic and we have about, I'm supervising like five interns. They each see three patients. A third of our uh, clients uh, canceled because they were starting to feel sick. Okay, so guarantee a lot of them don't know Chinese herbal medicine could be very effective uh, at cold and flu. So um, herbal formulas versus singular ingredients. So this is something I might want them to know. A lot of people will say this in general public. Um, okay, so what herb is it that helps? Okay, and it's like, well, so let me teach you a little bit of something. Each herb has many chemical active compounds that are responsible for how it's gonna accomplish its task. When using single herbs, their concerns in Chinese medicine is just not balanced, thus the concept of a side effect from a drug. And so we typically have multiple herbs in one formula to create a nice balanced effect so there's no side effects, also so that it's more potent. Western medicines, the pharmaceutical industry often wants a single patented chemical from a single herbal compound in order to market and patent it. And that's why we don't have, I think, antivirals, as far as I understand it, is viruses are going to mutate around you know, a patented formula uh, or patented um, drug uh, where, you know, in the decades it takes to get it on the market, it's just not going to be worth it financially. So that's why in this advanced stage of medicine, we don't have antivirals or not that many, certainly not for cold and flu. Whereas classical herbal formulas achieved a medical effect with anywhere from, you know, four to 14 herbs, just to state some numbers while being crafted for balance within the body. So in a formula, you have a veritable soup of hundreds, if not thousands of active ingredients, stimulating the body to respond in a desired way. What I'll often say is it creates a net-like effect so that even though the virus is trying to mutate around one of the chemicals in the, in the herbs and the, and the benefits, it can't mutate around all of them. There are just too many and it, it's been working. How do we know? Because it's been working for thousands of years. Uh, not only that, but if you try the herbs, you can find out for yourself, okay? Just telling people it's been working for a long time is not as useful as them waking up realizing, oh my gosh, my cold is gone. So these are the products that um, I've created and I'll tell you a little bit about, and I'm gonna tell you the herbal formulas they come from. So if you happen to have you know, your own herbs and you wanna use those, you can. 
Um, I've done these in a way that I think is easy to allow the patient to understand how to create some herbal crafting themselves, depending what level and how deep the pathogen has gone without trying to pretend to be herbalist because they're not. Um, so it's called Herbs from East, and I think it's a simple strategy. I think it's been highly effective. I've used it only on my patients for the first two years to make sure these products worked, and the results are fantastic. I mean, I have patients who come up to me and just say, okay, it's winter again. I'll take, you know, two bottles and uh, just very happy that it's working. And of course, if I notice it's not, or they feel like it's, it's not getting at what they're getting at, I'd always check their doses, check what herbs are using, and I can craft them something if I want to. I will do um, granule herbs um, needed. I'm a big fan of tinctured herbs. I'll tell you more about that in a moment. Again, any questions, just let me know in the chat or questions area. So I use tinctures, and I think uh, it's helpful because it's three-step method to aid in prevention and treatment of cold and flu. It's very easy to administer tinctured herbs. They store very easily, and most importantly, as a business person, they preserve very well. Tinctures preserve longer than granules, longer than pills. Uh, estimates typically are three years. I'd say most likely longer than that. Um, also, you can pour these into um, your own canisters, and sometimes you can mix and match. I sell them obviously uh, as is, but they're very potent. So when a, once a patient has this purchased, A, they're gonna use this throughout the winter and probably use it up. But if not, if it lasts till next winter, you know, it's not gonna go bad on them. Um, it does not need to be uh, preserved in a refrigerator, just in, you know, like anywhere, uh, like a cabinet. Okay, it's integrated. I say, hey, I'm not trying to replace your physician's visit. I'm just trying to let you know, you're kind of barking up the wrong tree if you're running to get antibiotics. And I've already explained that. but this is your first line of defense. When the intruder comes in, what's the Chinese answer? You close the door. You don't let the intruder walk in, see how sick you get, see how much stuff they steal and how much they damage before you decide you're gonna do something. And then take an antibiotic, which sort of you know, gets the intruder out, but damages your house more. You immediately close the door. You immediately take one of these uh, products. And if that's not doing it, and if it's progressed, and you're still sick after a certain amount of time, you know, go see your doctor, and then maybe you do need antibiotics. But this is going to be your first strategy. You're, you're actually addressing the virus properly. It's a proactive model. So it's useful even after you've had the cold or flu. You can then stay involved and stay in front of any future cold and flu. It gets the patient more aware of their health, more sensitive of their mind and body. It makes them pay attention when they're starting to get sick and see if they're feeling run down. One of my caveats for successful herbal medicine is, uh, and especially if you've got a cold, is you need to be sleeping. If you have trouble sleeping, I've noticed it's hard for the body to fully recover. The herbs will keep it at bay, but you're just sort of laying in wait. So sometimes we need to make sure we're also helping them get sleep. Obviously, acupuncture is very helpful for that. There's other herbal forms for that, just teaching them lifestyle strategies. But I found that sleep is an essential part of the recovery process for the immune system. Um, so these will help, but secret strategy is herbs plus sleep. Um, these contain immunostimulants, antiviral, and antibiotic herbal agents. Very simple. I'm not getting more complicated than that. I do have a list of everything that I pulled out of um, John Chen's, you know, pharmacology uh, herbal medicine book that says not only Chinese medical actions, but the, the pharmacologic benefits of each herb. Um, and that'll be available on my website eventually. Um, it's just being uh, worked on. But you know, they don't really need to know anything more than these words, antibiotic, antiviral, immunostimulant, which is true. It's based on time-tested traditions and herbal strategy. If it's not exactly right, I can get you something else because I am an herbal reservoir of knowledge. I've studied this for many years. I have gotten a uh, degree on it and I've gotten certified nationally for it. So you should tout those things. Okay, but what is it about tinctures that I like? I think it's very cost-effective. I think it's very efficient. Uh, the reason I learned about these is I, I shadowed Zev Rosenberg, who was the herbal department chair in San Diego, and Zev's a well-known, you know, herb nerd, an orthodox one, and he uh, was using tinctures. And I was caught off guard because his approach is very um, traditional. And he said, you know, the compliance is just so high and it's so effective and so efficient that I've really just fallen in love with it. And um, I also feel the same way. I am. An herbalist, I like to take herbs, but I will without question take my herbs if they're in tincture form every single day. Whereas the other forms, you know, I get a little tired of taking pills. I definitely get a little tired of taking granules at times. 
So I find personally that I respond best to these. Then you have the idea that they preserve active ingredients longer than raw or pill form. The shelf life is better. Um, if you don't use the whole bottle, not a problem, no refrigeration needed. And one bottle contains, these are two ounce bottles. So it's actually a lot because you don't need much at all. You, uh, you can get 30 doses, um, which probably lashes several colds. Um, I'll tell you a story uh, about exactly this product. Um, so Invasion, we'll talk about in a moment. It's basically what you would take, it's like a Yin Chao San modified. It's what you would take as soon as you feel cold or flu. And I'll explain why I choose that formula in a moment. But I gave it to somebody else. Uh, they work at my son's school. It's coming in from some other things like headache or acupuncture. You know, said she had a cold. I taught her about the herbs. She said, oh, they're helpful. Well, she brought them to work. Well, one of her colleagues, who happens to have a daughter in my, uh, in my son's class uh, and works and, and the admin, said, oh, you know, I'm feeling sick. And this patient advertised for me, said, oh, well, Mitch, you know, his son goes, he has these herbs and they work well for me. Probably work for you. Okay. So they're like most people, friends are telling friends about herbal products. I'd rather them be Chinese herbs than not. So she tried it and she said, you know what? I just took the whole bottle. She just let me keep it. And I've used it for a year. I just dose it when I need it. It's worked beautifully. Can I have more? This happened just last week. Now she just bought that again. And then she started asking about herbs for her daughter, which you can buy tinctures and gl with a glycerin base that can help keep kids away from antibiotics. That's a great example of, you know, the success this particular product's been able to bring me. Um, and I'm known now as a problem solver to her. The cost is efficient. People want to know about cost. You know, when you buy two ounces of high quality tinctures, <clears throat> it's not, it doesn't, you know, sound like the cheapest thing. It's going to be about 40 to $45. But with the amount of doses you get, it's actually only a few squirts of the dropper stopper. So that's actually only three to four dollars per day to prevent a cold and flu with all the herbal knowledge that we contain. You know, is that price worth it? Most people will say yes. And once they try it, they realize, oh, yeah, you know, I, I, it takes a while to get through these bottles. Um, the dosage I'll show you in a moment. But it's roughly two half droppers full and a little bit of water and drink it back like a shot. And so. I'm going to show you a little bit about these herbs. And again, if you have your own herbal pharmacy, I'll explain where the herbs are coming from. And it is not rocket science. You know, the classic herbal formulas are there for a reason. I think a lot of times we want to get creative and be different and our desire as Americans to be unique. But you know, the classic herbs that have made it through um, clinic are there for a reason. So step one is prevent a cold. And I call this prevention. And um, you can hopefully see and read uh, I'm, I have to put all the ingredients in, in English, and if you are curious about the ingredients, just shoot me an email. My email's at the front and end of this, and I can send you the ingredient list. Um, but I don't want to get into that here. I want to, there's the dosage there, two milliliters, which is approximately two half droppers full, taken three times per day with a small amount of water, okay? If you have kids, you can boil out the alcohol uh, that is preserved in by adding it to a small amount of boiled water. You can always add in a little honey or juice. Okay, so what am I telling patients? This is the best way to avoid a cold or flu to stop it before it starts. So that's recommending this form of prevention for boosting the immune system. This is Yuping Feng San Wan. Not surprising, right? I added some other things. I modify these forms myself. So I like Ganoderma and some other um, um, herbs, but this is essentially a modified Yuping Feng San. And this is for people who have frequently getting a common cold. I don't recommend this to everybody, but I say, hey, how often do you get colds? And if they say, oh yeah, throughout the whole year, Okay, then I'm saying, all right, you actually need to take this every day. This is designed that way. The other herbal forms are not designed to be taken every single day. So if you find that that's happening, you know, you actually need to take this one every single day and take the others only when you feel like you're under attack. So that brings me to the next uh, product, which is Invasion. And this is by far the one I sell the most of. It's expelling an invasion upon the initial symptoms. Same dosage, you know, it's a, it's, Moving on, it's based on Yin Chasa. I'll explain that in a moment. It is just such an incredibly powerful formula, and I've added some other strong antivirals, antibacterials, and I've modified a little bit. Um, I do like, you know, Chin Bo Wei and some other herbalists, and so I have my own sort of philosophies. But I think it's really one of the most powerful for the common experience of having that itchy throat, sore throat, you know, mild fever, runny nose. Um, 
If you develop sinus infection, it could be helpful. I've had this help me during um, an, en uh, an enterovirus that went through an RV I was staying in, and everybody got sick. Everybody. Every 24 hours, somebody else got sick, like horribly diarrhea, vomiting sick, except me. I was on a, a road trip, and I didn't know why. And then I realized I was taking Invasion, meant for upper respiratory, but it has Huang Leon in it. Um, and so I realized I was fortifying myself against this enterovirus that tore through, you know, every single person. Um, and so this also does have some uh, protection against that. Okay, this is the one you want to have on hand at work and at school. This is the one people talk about. Um, and this is the one that, you know, does the most. Now, a little note since we're herbalists here. You know, what about the idea of wind cold versus wind heat? We talk so much about it in school. You know, I, again, my, my focus is not to split hairs, but to help the most amount of people. And I think in my experience, at least in the Midwest, you know, I think about Zhu Dan Shi and his concern of lifestyle factors contributing to excess and heat. I just think that's a, a big factor here. So I often see people either with just a wind attack from Chimbo Wei, who talks a lot about that. If you want to look up his ideas, you just need, you know, lung dis, uh, dispersive herbs, much lighter. Um, but I don't see a lot of people really chilled like maybe the Chinese saw. I think maybe we're more protected in the environment. I think lifestyle wise, we have a lot of stagnations. Um, so usually I see people with some kind of invasion and it mixes with the six depressions in my, in, in my estimation. And so you have cheese stagnation, blood stasis, food stagnation, dampness, phlegm. So most people lean hot and that's why I've chosen this. If it moves more deeply into the lungs, uh, we have a problem, right? We need to expel something that's moved into the uh, zong fu more deeply. So the product eliminations, elimination helps eliminate it. Uh, same dosage is ching chi hua ta tang. And that's if it's progressed into your chest, right? Maybe it starts there for people. I always say, what kind of cold do you get? Does it go into your lungs? Does it go into your throat, your nose? Um, if it's nose and throat, it's invasion. If it's chest, it's elimination. If it's not perfect, I'll adapt it. It has a really remarkable um, ability to help people who chronically get bronchitis. These can be game changers. It helps loosen up and expel that phlegm. I put you know, some very strong antivirals, antibiotics, wanna make sure this works well. So this is a strong formula. So also I remind people, hey, these herbs are serious. So you know, because they are for wind heat, maybe not first thing in the morning, take these. Get a little bit of food in your stomach first. That's the only sort of heads up I give them. Um, but it's for people who've developed phlegm in the upper respiratory tract. So here's a little reminder about how you take it. Um, this is for all of them, not just invasion. You can drink it morning, afternoon, and evening. Uh, again, maybe after eating some food. At the very first signs, you don't feel well, but you could take it at any point your cold or flu. You can take it after the cold or flu to make sure that you're still in the clear. Once you feel better, you can stop taking it. You give the herbal bottle a quick shake, you add, you know, we're, we revise this so it can be two droppers full, but if they want to add a little more that they can, and it's only going to go halfway up the stopper. So you got to check. Some people do a drop. Oh, and taking the herbs, they didn't help. Whenever they say that, it's 99% of the time because they did a drop, not a dropper, half dropper full. So I always tell, as people, if they tell me how they're doing, I say, okay, now tell me how you're taking the herbs. And that'll clue me in if they're taking the right dosage. They have to get the right dosage. Uh, now add a small amount of water over the herbal tincture and drink it quickly. Down the hatch, followed up with a little juice or water. People can get used to this. I have my six and a half year old taking herbs uh, every day to help his, uh, prevent any kind of cold or flu and uh, no problem. So moving on, um, I'm going to move this through this somewhat quickly just so we have a, a little time for questions. You know, how do we get the proper dosing of tinctures? You know, I've used... Uh, I have friends who have a major you know, herbal business and bottling facility, and I like them because they are not cutting corners. They're highly into sourcing this properly, high quality, and it does matter with tinctures. I interviewed a lot of different companies, and some of them will use like spray on granules and then herb, you know, get the herb uh, matter out of that. We're using actual herbs that are you know, as sustainable and as clean as possible, and then we're third-party testing them. So that's an important thing to know. Your patients, you know, what's important is that whatever herb you're taking, they need to be third-party tested. And that way we're able to get our dosage very low. So two milliliters, two to three times a day. Um, so that's a very small threshold for proper dosing compared to other 
other forms of herbal medicine. And you know, patients don't love having to drink a lot of stinky herbs. They'll do it because it can be helpful. Do they love it? I'm gonna bet most of them don't. Um, they may learn to love it because it's effective, but if I can create an effect that's more convenient, what do you think they're gonna choose? So I use all different forms in my practice, but my default, because it allows me flexibility, potency, um, you know, good shelf life and effectiveness are tinctures. And then I'll kind of move around from there depending what patients need. So a little bit about manufacturing bottling standards. Um, one thing that's, that's unique is that we, we use a lot of really reputable herbal suppliers, including local farms of wild crafters, um, really try to get rigorous standards. Um, we try to use, you know, things that continue to offer better access to organically grown Chinese medicinals. You know, my partners are, are great. And we employ, this is what's unique, a 50-50 water to non-GMO cane uh, ethanol alcohol maceration. So that means, as you think about a tincture, it's just alcohol extraction, traditionally. But what are Chinese herbs? They're water-based. So uh, this is a matter of then using water maceration first, meaning you macerate the herbs and water extract them first, and then you apply the uh, alcohol extraction. So you're getting the best of both. So the, the constituents that come out of the water and come out of the alcohol when you apply them to herbs are slightly different. In fact, the alcohol can be more potent, but the tradition comes from the water. So we're, we're getting the best of both worlds here, potency and tradition. Um, with that, it's also, as I mentioned, a great shelf life, and then it's pretty strong tasting. You have a little bit of that alcohol, you have a, a lot of those herbs. So we add just a little bit of organic glycerin, um, just to create a little bit of sweetness on the tongue, but these are by no means sweet. I tell people they have a very authentic taste. <laughs> and if you taste bitter, that's how you know they're working. Um, so if somebody is just, you know, insanely picky, then you'll, you'll tell them maybe to boil out the alcohol and add some honey. Okay, there's good manufacturing practices here. So everything uh, is enforced by FDA standards. Um, every herbal batch comes with a certificate of analysis, which I'll show you in a moment. That means that we've done what? We've looked at every herb, we've tested it. Sometimes herbs have viruses on them when they come over from China. Uh, you can see if you can eradicate that through different processes or if it doesn't go away. You can make sure those proper ingredients are there. You can make sure there's no heavy metals in there, no pesticides. All of that's very important, and you'll see a batch number on these are proving that this is a high-quality product. So this is what that looks like. Um, here's some specifications on all the things that we've looked at and tested, the different herbal ingredients. Does it conform? How's the color look? How's it, how does it you know, test for things like uh, bacteria and viruses and yeasts and molds, and does it pass or fail? Okay, so what are the networking benefits? To get back to the heart of this matter, it's an immediate method and unified professional branding for offering solutions to common problems like the cold and flu. Like I said, I am now known for helping the cold and flu uh, in these networking events uh, almost as much as if not more than my ability to, to help paint. Uh, People can leave with something right away from event. That's a very strong marketing tool, a very strong uh, connection, and the gives you permission to check in with that patient. These people often share it with friends and family, and testimonials or networking group will start happening faster, building trust faster, as they seek out other answers you have to other problems. And often a client, once they realize it works, they'll buy two at a time or all three at a time, because they might wanna be able to then treat the different levels if they get them. Sometimes they'll just treat one, Sometimes I say, you know, sometimes it gets in my lungs. And then I teach them how to do some herbal matching themselves. If not, they still come back yearly for the herbs. And so you have obviously some income from that. So if we look at that in terms of the wholesale professional, you can purchase as a wholesaler, obviously, which means you're, you're paying a, a certain price and you're gonna sell it at a higher price to your clients. So a couple offers here, you can enjoy professional pricing discounts um, beyond wholesale. So we'll obviously sell you at wholesale. And then if you uh, purchase under 300, you can get 10% off. Above that, up to 499, 20% off. And above that, above 500, you can get 25% off additional. Just because I am excited to introduce this product and I'm, I appreciate your time. Essentially, the two ounce bottle, one of these bottles sells for $45 online. Um, you can sell that for less in your private practice, but that's the online pricing. And so the wholesale price is 2250. So that means you earn 2250 per bottle. If you sell at 45, which is nice, which means you sell three bottles, you're roughly making $67.50, which is about the price of an average treatment, give or take $70. So yeah, this can be another earner for you as well as, and really what this was about is how it promotes your practice, how people realize you have solutions that are really unmatched in anything in, in, in I think herbal supplements, which is our ability to fight cold and flu. 
And so now you can promote your private practice to more. I also want to mention that if you order online through TCM, Five Element TCM Supply, Five Element TCM Supply, you can use the code EAST, and that'll be good until the end of this month for 10% off. And I want to thank Five Element TCM Supply for hosting this. I want to thank you for attending it. There's my contact information, healthfromeast at Gmail. And the product is Herbs from East if you want to try these out. Uh, if you want to chat, if you want me to send you a, a list of ingredients, um, be happy to do that. It's available for the public at herbsfromeast.com. And I really hope that you found some interesting marketing ideas in this webinar and that you walk away ready to market yourself and your herbs more confidently with a more targeted vision. And with that, again, I'm Mitch Harris, and I thank you for your time. I'm going to leave a, a, we have a little bit of time if you're willing to stay a little bit longer. I have about five minutes to answer any questions that you have. And the, uh, a little reminder, the code is east at 5elementtcm.com. That's 5elementtcm.com, and the code is east, and you'll get 10% off until the end of the month. Any questions? Um, I'll just take a look here and see if anything's coming up. And while I'm waiting, we have a few more minutes. I just wanted to say, you know, I really wasn't sure how to market herbs. I actually left it out. I think another strong thing to market that we forget about are, are liniments and tinctures. I'm sorry, liniments and, you know, salves. So our ability to fight pain, the unique way that the martial arts tradition, Chinese medical tradition, promotes blood flow and circulation, where I think a lot of uh, liniments don't. Um, are helpful. Uh, there was a question, um, are the contents vegan? And they are. So there are no animal products in this. Um, there are a lot of folks, which is great, going you know, more vegetarian and vegan. So there is no uh, concerns there. These are, products are 100% vegan. And in terms of interactions uh, or contraindications with drugs, um, it's a standard conversation you would have with a patient. You know, what drug is it, right? First off, you want to know their, their medicines that they're on. There are certain things like Coumadin or Lithium where the reference range is, is always a bit dubious and they should not be mixing that with other drugs, let alone herbs. But often I'd say if there's any concern, you know, let, let me look at the herb um, and the, uh, the drug more so. But usually you just want to take it, you know, one hour before or two hours after. Very rarely does it have any, any complications. All right. No questions so far. If you are listening to this uh, later and you want to ask me a question, just shoot me an email. Um, another question came up, uh, what's the shelf life? Again, this is three years. And then in all honesty, probably more like five years. Um, the manufacturers, I think, have to say three years. But when I talk to them privately, they say, you know, obviously, if you can taste the ingredients and find the effect, we, I've found herbal products last longer than that. I would hope these aren't sitting around that long. Usually, they're going to last through a couple of cold and flu, unless they're getting really sick all the time, in which case I'm going to, you know, maybe start asking them for a constitutional formula. So this, again, is an introduction to sort of a gateway into the depth of herbal medicine. So if I'm finding a patient's using this all the time, I'll give an example of a success story. Um, patient got chronic sinus infections for, for years and um, taught her how to use invasion and elimination to ward off something coming on quick. She had the presentation of the upper respiratory, you know, throat pain, things like that. And then I got her on a constitutional formula through a granules. She takes her constitutional formula. We had to modify that, kind of find the right balance between her digestive health, her spleen, stomach, chi, and, and the herbs. And then she has an invasion, she needs it. And she hasn't had a sinus infection. She's had, she had them repeatedly. I'm talking like eight times in a year. I think she's had one in three years. One in three years. So she's more than happy to pay for these herbs to prevent that from happening again. She was put on antibiotics for years in her life, which is part of the problem. And she hasn't had any, have antibiotics other than um, one time. And that actually was because she, she kind of was trying to get off <laughs> to doing herbs. Um, and, you know, her, her system is such where her spleen, stomach, she's just not strong enough. She needs the support of the herbs. But it's a game changer, Chinese herbs. And again, it's a gateway, I think, these products to a deeper relationship to herbal medicine in whatever form they want, which is what you might also offer. So I see these as a great networking tool. Um, and I'm also happy to, to supply any other, you know, marketing, other support, because this is an, uh, a new venture that's going really well, but I'm always happy to help get um, people support that they need. Yeah, 
So I don't see any other questions right now. It is one o'clock. That was uh, exactly one hour. Thank you very much for your time. Again, feel free to reach out. You get 10% off if you use the code EAST um, at 5elementtcm.com. And then there's some other discounts if you like to try it. If you just want to uh, hit me up in an email, ask me some questions about any other marketing tips, uh, I'd be happy to do that too. And so without further ado, I'm going to let you enjoy your day. And thanks for attending and listening.